Hey, what's up guys, Totally Dubbed here, and today I'm going to demonstrate and show you and prove to you that Battlefield 4 is a CPU intensive game. So, as you can see, this is my desktop uh, PC. Uh, this is my desktop, as you can see. I've put my power options to uh, high performance, just simply so you can see my my um, overclock. So the CPU I'm running is an i7-3770K. It's overclocked at 4.5 gigahertz at around uh, 1.27 volts. As you can see right now, it's fluctuating. Uh, that's because of the offset. As you can see over here, I've at the moment got only eight gigabytes of RAM, but um, system idle right now with just um, these things open and uh, Google Chrome is about 3.3 uh, one gigabytes. CPU usage uh, spikes up every now and then, but as you can see, I'm on eight threads, so I've got um, the hyper threading enabled. My um, graphics card is running on the latest 331.40 um, drivers uh, from NVIDIA. I've got the MSI GTX 680 Twin Forza edition. And as you can see, here's my GPU Z is running on the stock clocks. But I mean stock clocks, it's factory overclocked by MSI, but it's the stock clocks. Now, why am I saying this is because a lot of people were complaining about the performance on the Battlefield 4 beta. There were some fixes out there. One of them was to enable VSync, which I will show you how to do that right now. Go into the NVIDIA uh, control panel. Um, not like that. Go into the NVIDIA control panel and you'll be able to see VSync um, selected there. So manage 3D settings, in manage 3D settings you see Battlefield 4 and three settings you're going to want to change is maximum, um, prefer maximum performance, triple buffering on on and vertical syncs as adaptive. That usually sorts out the majority of graphic card issues that some people have been having. I suggest doing this anyway simply because um, if your monitor which mine uh, is the LG IPS 234V is a 60 hertz monitor and if your graphics card for example the GTX 680 is capable of outputting more than 60 frames per second uh, basically you can get screen tearing. Some people notice it, some people don't. Usually the disadvantages of having uh, triple buffering and vertical sync are the fact that you have input lag. However I haven't real, really um, felt this in Battlefield 4, so I suggest doing that. With that said, you can disable it if you don't have any problems. I didn't have any problems, but I thought to enable it just anyway, uh, just because uh, I got some screen tearing every now and then when I was flying on and um, looking at my uh, jet, uh, not my jet, my helicopter on the outside view. So why am I making this video? It's simply to show you a couple of things. Now I've got couple, um, some pictures over here for you. First of all, this is the picture before I launch Battlefield uh, 4 Beta. This was the print screen I took, and mainly we're looking at over here the um, MSI Afterburner. The reason we're looking at that is the GPU usage. Some people noted some GPU usage spikes, or uh, more so um, said that their um, GPU usage wasn't going over 40%, therefore not enabling them the full graphics. However, I want to show you with hyper threading, this is with um, hyper threading, this is with hyper threading on this picture. As you can see, my CPU is with eight threads right there, and the average usage is about 50%. As you can see, if I draw a line around it, 50% is about the average. We can say 40 to 60% is the um, usage of the CPU. You can see the graphics card usage over here is mainly towards the 90% margin. Well, should I say 99% um, margin. We get the odd dips. This one was alt tabbing and so was this one. The other spikes over here, I guess, were just because the graphics card wasn't being challenged enough at that time. But the majority of the time we're looking at the over 95% or 90% usage on the graphics card with very fi uh, very minor dips. As I said, this dip and this dip were because of me alt-tabbing. And if you alt-tab, that means you're coming out of the game. Therefore, the, the GPU is not going to need that um, usage anymore. Let's take a look at these two graphs. Now you can see the straight, the big difference right there. So as you can see, let's go to this one because this one is the most significant one. 
these two that I just showed you right here are both with hyperthreading disabled. So this is, for example, getting an i5 overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz. As I said, ignore that because that's power saving. Uh, that's just due to power saving, as you can see. But it's a 4.5 gigahertz overclock. Um, and just not to confuse it, I'm just going to go on this one. Um, 4.5 gigahertz overclock, hyperthreading off. Therefore, you could be on an i5. I I There's an equivalent of an i5. So as you can see, there's a huge difference with the CPU usage. As you can remember with the hyper-threading enabled, we got about 40 to 60%. With hyper-threading off, we got about the 80% region, some spikes going to the 100% to 80% and to 90% um, region. This is quite high, uh, it's abnormally high, I must say, but you can see the CPU usage has increased because there is a lower amount of threads. Because hyper-threading is disabled, that means you've only got four threads available with the i7 or even the i5. So, in this respect, you can tell that hyper-threading does help Battlefield 4 beta. I'm saying the beta because in, uh, in Battlefield 4, the final version, this might change. However, if it doesn't change, I'll seriously be asking questions at EA. Because I know a lot of people have gaming rigs at i5s, and I don't see why they would buy i7s. The reason I bought an i7 is because I video render quite a lot, and therefore I see the um, the uh, advantages of it. But I never needed, uh, uh, if I wasn't doing that, I wouldn't have ever needed an i7. An i5 would have done fine. So as you can see, CPU usage is a lot. However, this is the more interesting thing, is the GPU usage. Look at all those spikes. So let's go to this picture. This is, again, hyper-threading off. Look at all those spikes which are taking place there. All of these um, spikes, there was none of these, none of this from this to this was me alt tabbing out. This was simply because the GPU was uh, having trouble uh, because the CPU was always quite high on load, as in we're looking at the 90% region in this respect. 90 to 95% region with CPU usage means the graphics card was stuttering. So there is a fix towards this, and this is to go in your task manager and um, go to your processes and set the priority for Battlefield 4 to low priority. The reason you do this is because it reduces the load that goes on the CPU. Therefore, your graphics card seems to handle it better. I don't know why the reason behind this is, but this is the fix that some people have had to do. In my case, seeing as I had hyper-threading enabled, I never had a problem with GPU usage. As you can see, pretty consistent and pretty solidly high GPU usage, but on the same map, on the same game variant, um, and just after a restart, we were seeing a lot of uh, GPU spikes. So as you can see, hyper-threading does help a lot, but more so, it does affect your graphics card performance. And this is, again, a bit abnormal uh, for it to do that because the GPU and CPU should operate separately and each of them should do separate tasks. But in this respect, they're working together. And unfortunately, because the CPU i5, for example, in this respect would be an i5 example, even though I have an i7, it's just disabled hyperthreading, would be bottlenecking your GPU, no matter how good it is. And as you can see, remember, I have got a GTX 680, which is easily capable of outputting 45 to 85 frames a second on the on ultra preset with 90 field of view so there you go guys hopefully this information is qu quite conclusive for you it gives you a good idea of if you are having problems there are some fixes that you can do one is that gpu fix that i said uh, that you can do via vsync and secondly, and more importantly, is to check your CPU usage whilst you're gaming. Alt tab out and see what your CPU usage is, especially if you're on an i5. People haven't reported problems, but I'm running Windows 7 64-bit and I have no intention of upgrading to Windows 8 because I utterly hate Windows 8's interface. But the performance on Windows 8 has been noted to be better. You get about 10 to 15 frames per second higher because of the better architecture. So... If you're looking for the best Battlefield 4 beta experience, you're better off getting Windows 8. But that said, if you don't want to get Windows 8, you want to stick to Windows 7 like myself, but have an i5 and are experiencing stuttering problems because of your CT CPU, I highly suggest setting the going to the Processes tab and setting low priority to your CPU for, the, um, for Battlefield 4 EXE. 
Anyway guys, I hope this video has been useful for you and I hopefully this will solve some people's issues and some people's queries of this. As far as I'm aware, I'm the very first person to find this out, as in actually have live data and actually say yes, this is it is being affected. We all know Battlefield 4 is a pretty CPU intensive game. We definitely know it's a graphically intensive game, but I don't think there's one person which has proven this with actual graphs and actual data in front of us. They've just said, my i5 is lagging. My i7 is lagging. My GTX um, 680 cannot cope with it. it there have been no solid evidence and some people have posted results and usually they're positive but there's not been any concrete evidence to show hyper-threading affects Battlefield 4 Beta. Well, here you go guys, here is the evidence that Battlefield 4 Beta heavily relies on different threads and hyper-threading enabled on i7s will greatly benefic uh, benefit your gaming experience. That said, if you still have problems, it'll probably be graphics uh, related. So anyway guys, again, hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment and subscribe for more videos on Battlefield 4, um, which will be coming in the upcoming days. Take care guys, totally dubbed out. Bye bye.